Ladies and gentlemen, this is again Ralph Brown from Zurich in Switzerland, and I'm going to present you two tough cases this time, so I will make it too easy for you. Again, we're going to use the algorithm that I've shown you in a previous podcast, and we discussed in detail in the previous podcast. First, we look for signs of melanocytic lesions like network aggregated globules. This is in level one. If we don't find them, we move on to level two and look for criteria for basal cell carcinoma, and so on and so on. So if this is a problem, please consult a previous podcast where this has been explained in detail. Let's move on with case number three. Case number three is a 50-year-old lady. We're on the chest, and the lesion we're looking at is this one here. So it's an outlier lesion at higher power. So it's very dark compared to the others. The patient has a sun-damaged skin. And I show you dermoscopy, and again, I leave you a few seconds with dermoscopy, just that you could take a look at it. So, first question is, is this lesion melanocytic or non-melanocytic? We're going to use our algorithm, and in level one, we look first for pigment network. And this is a pit wall in this lesion here, because if you look quickly, you might say, okay, this is pigment network. Yes, you're right. But when you look at the surrounding skin, like here and here, you see that this patient has a sun-damaged skin. Let's go back to the clinical picture. So she has a sun-damaged skin with all these freckling here, and you expect some degree of freckling. And sometimes what you have, you have a lesion, which is this is the lesion, and the lesion ends here. And at the periphery, since you're on sun-damaged skin, you might have some degree of reticulation, which is not part of the lesion. So the question you should ask yourself, is this part of the lesion or not? And the best is to step back, look at the clinical picture, and see if this is sun-damaged skin or not, or if the predominant feature of the lesion, which is this here, is pigment network. And then I could tell you, no, this is not part of the lesion. This is not pigment network. So we move on and look for aggregated globules, like cobblestone globules or a nevus with globular architecture. Do we see that? No, we don't see it. Do we see streaks at the periphery, pseudopods or radial streaming? No, we don't see that. Do we see a homogeneous blue pigmentation, for, like for blue nevus? No, we don't see that. Do we see location-specific criteria, like for acral lesions or the face, like your facial lesions or acral lesions? No, we don't see that here because we're in the chest. We don't expect it. So since we don't have real pigment network, the dermatofibroma is now an option here, and we move on to level two decision, and we look for specific criteria for BCC, for basal cell carcinoma, such as arborizing telangiectasia, shiny white streaks, spoke wheel-like structures, blue-gray ovoid nests, multiple blue-gray dots and globules, leaf-like areas. Do we see any of those? No, we don't see any of those. So we move on to level three here, and we will look for the specific criteria of seborrheic keratosis. So in flat seborrheic keratosis, we would look for moth-eaten border, jelly-like appearance, and fingerprinting. And in the raised ones, which is the case, we've seen this is a raised lesion, we would look for milia-like cysts, pseudocomedons, fissures, ridges, pseudonetwork, uh, and hairpin blood vessels. So these are the structures we're going to look for. And let's go back. Do we see those? Yes, you have a very sharply demarcated lesion. You have multiple pseudocomedons here and here and here and here and here and here and here. You see as well one milia-like cyst here at the periphery. This is a milia-like cyst. Again, the sharp demarcation here. It's a clue to the diagnosis. And all you see here in the bluish background are hairpin vessels. So this is as well a clue, the vasculature is as well a clue for the diagnosis. So this being said, your diagnosis is seborrheic keratosis. You're right. So let's move on to the next case, which is case number four, which is again a tough one, but you know, you're, you're an advanced level, so you can handle a tough case now, and then we do some easier ones afterwards. This is a 47-year-old lady. We are on the back. And the lesion we're looking at is this. So this is the imprint of the dermatoscope. So don't get fooled by this. I give you higher power picture, small angioma on the side. And this is the lesion we're talking about. She's 47, has sun-damaged skin. 
and I give you the dermoscopy picture, and I'll leave you with that a second. So again, first question is, is this a melanocytic or a non-melanocytic lesion? We take out our algorithm and look for pigment network. Do we see pigment network here? No, there's no pigment network. Do we see aggregated globules here? No, there are no aggregated globules. Do we see streaks in this lesion? No, there are no streaks in terms of radial streaming and pseudopods. No, there are not. Do we see blue homogeneous areas? No, we don't see. It's not a blue nevus. And again, there are no location-specific criteria. This does not apply since the lesion is on the upper back. And we didn't find any of those. So we move on to level two and look for the BCC criteria, which are arborizing telangiectasia, ulceration, leaf-like areas at the periphery, spoke wheel-like structures, shiny white areas, crystallis-like crystallis -like structures, blue-gray ovoid nests, and blue-gray dots and globules. So let's take a look at that. What do we find? Well, we see some blue-gray ovoid nests, multiple blue-gray dots and globules here, almost some granularity, and lots of leaf-like structures here at the periphery. All these are light brown leaf-like structures corresponding to pigmented tumor nests. Again, here's the same thing. Nice leaf-like structure here and here here all around, leaf-like structures. You see some blood vessels, but since this picture has been taken in contact mode, most of them you don't see them anymore. But there are some blood vessels. But if you would look at the lesion with polarized light, you'd see very nice arborizing telangiectasia. So again, this being said, your diagnosis is BCC. You're absolutely right. Great job. Fantastic. So. If you have any feedback and questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email to dermoscopy at icloud.com. Thank you very much and looking forward to seeing you soon on this podcast channel.